Okay, what's up, guys? It's um, it's your boy Pure Gamer here again, brother. Back at it again with another video, and uh, I was really sort of debating whether or not I wanted to make this video or not because, um, considering in the Dragon Ball community, people think most about this or that. Or the other, I only say the Dragon Ball community because you've probably already read the title of the of the video as I'm recording this, so it doesn't even really fucking matter. But I was debating whether or not to make uh, a review. On Dragon Ball Super and my thoughts on it thus far from what I've seen I've actually like fully watched Dragon Ball Super like already like from episode 1 to 56 episodes um, next week there's gonna be episode 57 if you guys want to see a review on that episode when it does come out next week uh, be sure to drop a like and leave a comment saying if you want to see that or not because I might actually end up doing it so who knows but anyways I wanted to make a video talking about what my thoughts on Dragon Ball Super as a whole now the Dragon Ball Super as a whole, I actually really like it. I like the, th the stuff they're doing with it. I like all the characters that they've been introducing thus far. I like how they're expanding the different universes from uh, 1 to 12, I'm pretty sure there is. And then like there's this king of all that can pretty much wipe out an entire universe by just a blink of an eye. It's, absolutely, ab it's just absolutely crazy. But before I get into Dragon Ball Super, for those of you who might be questioning, Yes, I have been an avid just fan of the Dragon Ball series as, as a whole, all the way from Dragon Ball to Dragon Ball Z to the movies to most of the games. Like when I was younger, I always played the games. I was a fan of the games because they were different. I, I didn't play games like that when I was younger and I liked them and I was a fan of the games. I never really watched the show or the anime, considering the, uh, depending on whatever you call it, but I didn't really watch it until I was um, a little bit older when I had a little bit more access of the internet. And then once I did, I, re I went all the way back to the beginning of Dragon Ball for episode 1, finished like all, like I think it's, I think it's like 200 episodes or something like that, like that of uh, Dragon Ball. I would watch Dragon Ball Z, watch all the episodes from Dragon Ball Z, and then I proceeded to watch all the movies. So I literally like caught up with the storyline. I've come up with like countless of different theories with some friends who are also fans of the Dragon Ball series uh, as a whole. And the, so far out of all my friends in my friend group, I think I might be the only one that's actually watching Dragon Ball Super, but if any of my friends are actually watching this video right now, let me know if you're actually watching Dragon Ball Super or not, and let me know what you actually think about it because I'm actually kind of curious. But anyways, now we're back. Now I'm gonna go back to the reason why I clicked on this video. My thoughts on Dragon Ball Super. I think it's absolutely amazing. Like the fact that it's just an expansion off of the Buu saga, like after the end of Dragon Ball Z, is just it's kind of heartwarming because. Like Dragon Ball Z ended like uh, like years ago. Dragon Ball Z ended uh, ended years ago, and I didn't really think they were end they were gonna end up like doing anything else with the franchise of what it was. Besides, just keep remaking the games and retelling the story all over again. And eventually, did the Xenoverse, which I actually lo I actually absolutely love this game. It's actually amazing. I'm super excited for Xenoverse too, but that's that's the point. Dragon Ball Super. Um, the first two arcs, it's basically just the Battle of Gods so uh, saga, and then the Resurrection F saga. So, I'm actually going to leave a link in the description to the website that I've been watching all of the Dragon Ball Super episodes as of just recently. If you want to watch it live, I don't know where you can go to watch it live, but these are the episode, or this is the website that I've been watching these episodes on thus far. And I'm leaving a link in the description to the episode where it just completely skips all of the Battle of Gods arc and uh, the, the Resurrection F arc, but by all means, if you want to watch it all the way from the beginning to uh, episode 56 of where, it's at, of where it's at right now in the series, by, by all means, if, if you want to do that, that's up to you. You can go ahead and do that, but to me, uh, I feel like some people would want to see um, after like all the Resurrection F stuff because they've probably already seen both of the movies of Battle of Gods Resur Resurrection F in the dub. And by the way, there is no English dub for this. Uh, sooner or later, they're going to end up making the English dub. I don't know when, but it should hopefully come out very, very soon. In maybe 2016, maybe early 2017. But either way, it's it's in production. Um, Toei is getting, is getting ready to do the dub. And so you guys should be really excited for that right now. But so far, there's only the sub. There is, there is English subtitles, so... If you guys are worried about that, you don't need to worry about that. There's English subtitles. It's all in Japanese, so you don't need to worry about it. And I just want to say that after all the Resurrection F and Battle of God stuff, when it got to the World, not world Tournament, but when it got to the tournament, 
with Champa and Beerus' as teens from Universe 6 and 7, I gotta say, that was really fucking intense. That's when the series really gets like super intense and there kind of felt like there was a threat, but not really. It's just the tournament of two different universes with the strongest fighters in both of those universes. I will say my favorite character from the Universe 6 team has to be hands down Hit. Hit is just so badass. Like he, he can literally freeze time for like, it was like a quarter of a second and then throughout his whole fight with Goku, he ended up going to like half a minute or some shit like that. I don't remember, but it just ended up being just an amazing fight. Hit is head, hands down my favorite uh, Universe 6 character. And I don't think anybody can really top hit and like how just awesome he is as a character, how sh m more powerful that he is than compared to a lot of other uh, people in, in the franchise. And he is my favorite character in Universe 16. Now Frost, Frost was interesting in the beginning. I just like the fact that he was basically just another humanoid uh, figure of Frieza in Universe 6. He looked like it, and then he acted as a good guy, but he ended up being just a fucking douchebag, but that's besides the point. And the Saiyans in that universe are actually a little bit more um, calm, I would say. They're a little bit more calm because their race actually still exists. And the fighter, the the one Saiyan that they sent out to fight in that tournament, he's, he's pretty cool. He's pretty cool. He kind of reminds me of Tarbol because when Vegeta fought him, uh, the Saiyan from Universe 6, I think it's Kaba, um, it, it kind of reminded me of Tarbol because it kind of he kind of looked like Tarbol a little bit like before he actually like ended up turning into Super Saiyan through some training through mid-battle with fucking Vegeta which is absolutely amazing because you never think Vegeta would ever do that and of course like all of the tournament stuff ends, uh, ends off and then it, uh, they wish uh, they used the Super Dragon Balls to make a wish so uh, that Shenron or Shenlong and basically it's just it was absolutely just incredible the the, the animation and the dialogue and the characters of all that of happening it was just absolutely just fucking gorgeous to the eye if you guys want to see the episode this is the time where you need to start watching Dragon Ball Super because Dragon Ball Super is getting super intense now because I'm gonna go back I'm gonna go further ahead into the future trunks slash black goku arc now I, I think i forgot to say this but i'm gonna go ahead and say this right now if you guys haven't been watching dragon ball super uh spoilers there's a lot of spoilers ahead <laughs> i don't know why i'm saying this this late into the video but i am doesn't matter anymore i guess i'm gonna leave it in the title anyways so just so you know i'm gonna go ahead and say it now if you go if you aren't into the future trunks arc then this is a warning for you guys who haven't seen it yet but outside of that, if you guys um, are watching it, this is what I think about the Future Trunks arc. Now, Future Trunks, his character, I really like him in this arc in Dragon Ball Super. When he went back to the past and Z, in the beginning he was he was really cool. He was interesting. You know, he was a person who went back to the past that his mother had created because in his world there were androids who just destroyed like the whole planet basically not the whole planet but they were basically just destroying cities and killing everybody on on planet earth and he had to go back into the past to at least get help or something and then he ended up staying there he trained he got stronger and by the end of that arc and dragon ball z he ended up uh, becoming a lot stronger and he had defeated the androids along with cell and his first form because he could not absorb uh, the two androids that he needed to go into his perfect form now Trunks in uh, Super, he is a lot. He was a lot different, you know, because obviously, for whatever reason, I remember his uh, his hair color in, in Z being different than what it is in Super. But that's besides the point. I actually really like the way that Trunks looks in the beginning of the Future Trunks arc. Uh, I just like how he's just like fighting for his life against uh, this mysterious figure that we don't know who it is. You know, we don't know what it is. And then he gets to where Bulma is, future Bulma, and then there was enough, um, I guess it's just like a fuel for the time machine in order to go back into the past just once. And then it was, it was only once, and that was it. And then uh, Trunks' mother, Bulma, told him to uh, just, just go because they had been attacked by this mysterious black figure. And uh, unfortunately, uh, future Bulma had died and she gave her life to make sure that Trunks would at least try to get back to the past just for the sake of trying to save Trunks' future and that was just 
it was such a it was such a moment that happens in, in Dragon Ball just in general. But when it happens, when it's a character that you know that has been a part of the series for so long, it kind of hits you in like a certain spot where you wouldn't think it would, but it does. And it was a very emotional thing, especially for Trunks because that's his mother, you know. And obviously, like he's younger from uh, or not younger. I'm sorry, he's older than what he was from Z. He's a lot older. I don't, I don't know. I don't recall ever like him saying what his age was now uh, in Super, but that's besides the point. He gets to the time machine, he goes back to the past, and he's there, but he's wounded because he was attacked by the mysterious black figure, and that ended, and that figure ended up looking like Goku. But the thing about this Goku was it's basically just an embodiment of evil. It wanted to destroy, it wanted to eradicate all these humans, these humanoid figures on all these different planets, and he ended up going to planet Earth and he destroyed all of the humans and buildings, just everything. He killed all these people just because he didn't like the humans uh, or humanoid figures or whatever. He just didn't like humans. And then the fact that a figure that looked like Goku could be so evil, it was just so surprising. And we, I just never expected this to actually like happen, you know? Like, I was, I was a little bit spoiled. It was a little bit spoiled for me before I started watching Super again. And uh, I, I knew there was Black Goku, but I was like, why the fuck did they add to like, talk about this and every single fucking YouTube channel that I'm subscribed to that, that talks about Dragon Ball Super? But that's besides the point. Just Goku Black as a whole. He was stronger than, he was stronger than Trunks in the future. And after Trunks went back to the past, he had met uh, Son Goku, which was the, the, one of the people that he was trying to meet up with, along with uh, his father in the past, obviously, because Trunks needed help. He needed help in order to just protect the planet and the, the future of where he was from. And it was just the fact that when he woke up after eating one of the Senju beans and actually had attacked Goku actually had me pretty surprised, but you got to understand, like... When he attacked Goku, he thought it was um, uh, Black Goku. I'm just going to call him Black because that's what they refer to him in the show. So I'm just going to refer to him as Black. And and you got to understand, like, when he was attacked by Black the whole time for, like, over a year or so or something like that, just against that one character in the franchise, you got to think, when someone looks like him, you kind of want to attack him, you know? You, you kind of just want to do what you can do, you know? He thought he failed to go back to the past... But really, he did. And then, of course, uh, Black Goku went back to the past with the Time Ring. And the Time Ring, that's only used with the Kaioshin or the King Kai of the different, of the different universes. But Black Goku was no Kaioshin. He actually got that from a Kaioshin, obviously. And we, didn't, and we don't know how he got it in the first place. I don't think we still know how he got it. But there's a character that kind of leads up to it. And people are theorizing what or, or how he got the Time Ring and... Uh, how he exists and stuff like that. But anyways, just the fact that like Goku Black and Goku, Son Goku, ended up fighting like in the past. Obviously, like Goku was le was leagues ahead. He was leagues ahead of Black. It was just he was so much stronger than him. And then when he went back to the past, he absorbed Goku's uh, strength, and he ended up using that uh, against him later on in future episodes. But I'm gonna get I'm gonna get into that later. But he went back to the past and he learned to, I guess, sort of master like a new form. And I'll talk about this form also later uh, in the video. But he ended up taking his strength. And so th from there on out, they were trying to repair uh, the time machine because when, Bo when Goku Black was trying to, uh, was um, getting pulled back to the past actually because of the time ring. Because the time ring actually forbids someone to actually do that. He had destroyed the time machine, but then the time machine that was from Cell, when he went back to the past all those all those years ago, and Z, it kind of surprised me, but at the same time, I kind of expected it because, like, why would they not have it, you know? Just because, like, it's a time machine, you know? Like, Bulma would want to, like, do some experiments on it and, like, see, like, how it works and stuff like that. But anyways, like, they fixed it up. He made it to where it was like in working proper condition, and then we, and then they went back into the future, with uh, tr with Trunks, Goku, and Vegeta. And Vegeta, they both have two, uh, the two God forms: the Super Saiyan Blue form, the Super Saiyan Blue uh, Goku, and Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta. 
And in Trunks, he doesn't have that form. He's actually a lot weaker than the Black and any other character in, like, in the franchise thus far, besides just a few other characters that were from the past, like Piccolo, Krillin, and stuff like that. And uh, when they went, they went back to the past, in this moment that happened in the latest episode that was just released into uh, into the Dragon Ball um, like episodes in episode 56. The thing that I liked was that I didn't talk about this character just because um, there's still like so much going on with her and stuff like that. But Mai, one of the members of the Pilaf gang, she is working with the Resistance against Black Goku. And really, like you would think by shooting guns at someone who basically doesn't get hurt by it, you would think that they would soon realize that it's not working like the way they think it would. But they went ahead and go try, go ahead and try to do it anyway. And supposedly Mai dies because she gave up her life to try to help uh, Trunks get back to the past. But really, she didn't die. She somehow survived. I don't know how, but she did. And ultimately, she ended up start uh, like redoing all the stuff she was doing with the Resistance in the first place, just waiting for Trunks to get back to the past. Then they actually come back to, uh, come back to the future, and then they meet up again. Trunks is like, oh my god, I thought you were dead. And then Mai's like, nope, I wasn't dead. You just left me behind, you asshole. No, she didn't say that, but no, I just thought that was funny on like how it happened. And then, of course, they go to uh, the, refu uh, the refuge of where the last known survivors of the human race are in uh, in the future. And the fact that there was all these people that were just injured and just trying to survive as much as they can against this, against this figure of evil, Black Goku. He's just so much powerful than they are, and there's nothing they could do about it. And then, of course, they ended up actually having a really touching moment where there was these two kids, and uh, Goku decides to make him smile, and then it made all the, and it made it made uh, Mai uh, realize what she was fighting for. She was fighting for the happiness of these children that could soon have a future where they can just be in peace. And and then Vegeta, being uh, being the uh, the guy that he is, uh, because they actually wanted to make Vegeta seem like a good guy. He really is because there's no more evil in his heart anymore. He wants to fight Goku, obviously, just to prove that he's more stronger than him because he's got Saiyan blood in him and that's and that's just him with his pride. But he's no longer just an evil person anymore. There's no more evil in his heart. He's a good he's a good man now and uh, Bulma had prepared a feast for the for the people of the future and then Vegeta pulled out a capsule with all the foods that all the people in the future can eat. Finally, like something, something actually like decent, like they haven't had in like a long time. And then sooner or later, for whatever reason, they decided to mention that, like, oh yeah, Yajirobe's alive in the future. By the way, he's the only like actual, I guess, Z fighter to actually like stay alive. Which I'm not going to talk more into that. If you want to watch the episode where it goes into detail on how he survived, you can go ahead and do that. But then later on in episode 56, they go ahead and meet up in a courtyard. It looks like, and then. They go and fight Black Goku. They go and fight Black, and first off, it's Vegeta against Black because he wants to be the one to destroy uh, destroy Black. And because when Black went back into the past and he absorbed Goku's strength, he had became significantly stronger. Now, how much stronger uh, did he become? So far, we don't know, but basically, he just became stronger than Vegeta. And Vegeta is one of the strongest characters in the franchise. And I just believe that that's just absolutely just phenomenally like insane, and I can't believe that actually like happened. You know, that's just just that, this is crazy in my mind. And he's just wailing on him. He's going through like these buildings. He's going to just, he's going through these destroyed buildings that were just like burnt to crisp, like just from this fire of a flame from this evil figure of Goku Black. And then he starts wailing them on on the ground. It starts be, it just starts becoming a crater of where Black is being hit by Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta because Vegeta is just going all out on him with punch after punch after punch after punch on the ground. And then Goku Black wasn't even phased. Black wasn't even phased. He wasn't even like injured. There wasn't a, a scrape on him or anything. He's just so much stronger than Vegeta. And then, uh, then, then of course he pushes Vegeta back to where um, Trunks and Goku were, and then that's when the next transformation gets revealed, and that is Super Saiyan Rose, which, which literally he just comes up with like on the spot, and I think that's just absolutely just hilarious. But he comes with the, he comes with the name of his transformation Black, 
uh, Black transforms into Super Saiyan Bros, and he came up with that name just like on the spot. And then uh, Vegeta just goes back and starts trying to fight him again. He goes for like he, do, he goes for a few punches. He goes for a really a really hard right hook, and it misses. And then Goku Black goes for a punch, and then Vegeta is just like, no, I'm not done. I'm not I'm not gonna give up this fight. He wasn't giving in. And then eventually, um, I forgot I forgot what um, this one user Geek them 101. I forgot what he uh, what he called this move, but basically he, uh, Goku Black had become uh, had formed a blade of his of his energy and ki into his right hand and then stabbed Vegeta just in the chest, and, and that was supposed to emotionally like hurt us because we had just recently seen this like how Vegeta was just like uh, a good person and like that was supposed to affect us emotionally and Vegeta didn't die v Vegeta didn't die yet um now is he gonna survive I don't I don't I don't know but I, f I feel like he definitely will because why would they kill off a character just for whatever reason but yeah like Vegeta gets stabbed in the blade from Goku Black and then Goku he then fights Black in his Super Saiyan uh, Blue form as well and Trunks is just standing there he's just wondering like how can Black have powered up so much, so much more than when he what he was when he back when he went back to the past to just try to go kill Trunks, he, and then of course like uh, Black and Goku they just fight they go just go head on into each other and of course Black in his Super Saiyan Rose form is just he's so much more powerful than Goku in his Super Saiyan Blue form, a form with God Key he's supposed to be one of the strongest in all of the universe and he's just being completely just blown away from this uh, from this person known as Black Goku in a Super Saiyan Rose form and then from the heavens of the gods I guess you can say comes uh, comes a character that was um, featured in a couple episodes uh, before um, and I don't I don't want to butcher the name so I'm not gonna say it but let's just say that this character was supposed to be linked with Goku Black in some way they were trying to figure out who Black, who Black Goku was. They were trying to figure out how he became who he was. Like, where did he come from? Who is Goku Black? Who is Black? No one knows who he is. And uh, a, a, a Kaioshin, a, a, a princess who was supposed to eventually become into a Kaioshin, had evil in his heart, and he had the exact same like kind of energy and key that Goku Black had. And he's from uh, Universe 10. There are 12 universes. He's from Universe 10. And the fact that he had the exact same key as Goku Black, and he's basically almost the exact same as Goku Black because he hates any he hates uh, human uh, humanoid uh, just figures, just anything that's like remotely similar to a human. He just doesn't like them. It's 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 the exact same as Black. He just wants to eradicate them. He wants to get rid of evil. He wants to get rid of all this evil and just just have it away but um uh the kaioshin from his universe he's like no there has to be balance but then he's just like no there has to, we have to get rid of evil we have to get rid of all this so that way there could just be peace and he wants to eradicate all the humans and he's just he's such a like in a powerful character but he's just he's so bad he's just trying to just get rid of all the humans and it's just it's getting in insane and then they go into the future and I think it's Samusa. I'm just gonna go ahead and say his, Samusa. That's his name. He comes from the he comes from the uh, from the heavens. Like I'm just gonna go ahead and say that he comes from the sky. And then he says, "Wait, I thought you promised me that I would kill Son Goku." And then that's when we figure out that after all the fans have been theorizing that Samusa and Goku Black are the same person, they are not. They're two different people who just work together for the same goal. Samusa and Black Goku are basically essentially the same person, but they're not. They're two different people, and they're trying to eradicate all the humans, and they're trying to kill Goku, Son Goku. And that's when it ends off on a cliffhanger, when we realize that Samusa and Black Goku are two different, entirely different people, and it just leads off on a cliffhanger. And next week is when episode 57 comes out. I'm super excited for it. Like I said, if you guys want me to review on episode 57, like right after it comes out and I watch it, I will make a video on it, you guys. I seriously will. Just leave a comment asking me if you want to see it because I definitely will do it. I might end up doing it no matter what, depending on how, uh, how well this video does. But that's basically just like all of what's been happening in Dragon Ball Super right now. 
I literally just sat down like one day and I watched like episodes one through fourteen. It was the Battle of God's Ark, and I was like, oh, this is interesting. This is actually really cool. But I'm just not gonna watch. I didn't watch the rest of it. I didn't go through the rest of the episodes. And then I see all these uh, videos on my, on my YouTube feed, like discussing like Goku Black and Samusa and all these characters from the different universes and hit. It just got to my mind, it got to my brain, and I was just like, no, I have to watch Dragon Ball Super before I watch, before I watch any of these other videos on YouTube. Just because I don't want to be left out. I want to know what's been going on in the universe of Dragon Ball. And I'm just, I'm just so excited for what's going to happen in the future. There's a new threat, and his name is Goku Black. And he's here to try to kill Son Goku. And that's pretty much this Dragon Ball Super in a nutshell that's been going on right now. Please, guys, I I 100% recommend that you go, you, know, you guys go watch Dragon Ball Super right now because it's just absolutely just getting crazy. And like I said, it is the sub, but really, if you can just get, uh, if you can just uh, ignore, I guess, in a way, just the voices uh, of the Japanese uh, people that do the actual like animated version. And natural like just whatever not the, just not the dub if you guys can just get out of that and just read the subtitles and just watch the, the anime just everything that's been going on i swear you guys will absolutely just enjoy it if you guys are a fan of the dragon ball series as a whole now guys i'm gonna go ahead and end up the video this video i've been recording for almost 30 minutes so far almost half an hour and i'm gonna go ahead and just uh just cut it off right now if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to just leave a like. Just leave a like on the video. Um, just leave a like on the video if you really did enjoy. Let me know if you want to see more videos like these in the comment section below. <sighs> and that's pretty much it. I'm out of breath right now. I'm going to go get some fucking water so I can just rec recuperate and just and just wait for the next episode that will be coming out next week on September 4th. Mark, mark that on your calendar and just be ready for when that episode comes out. Anyways, guys, I'll see you later. Peace.